scheduled originally to speak on Saturday morning, and he will not be here at that time. So Don is going to speak on Saturday morning, and Luis is going to speak now. So uh, Luis is from Brazil. He has uh, worked closely with Andre Assis, who is one of my heroes, one of the really, truly uh, great men as far as bringing uh, our understanding of uh, electrodynamics to, uh, you know, bring, bringing back the work of people like Ampere and, and uh, Wilhelm Weber and some of these great men from the 19th century and interpreting them and understanding them in ways which are, which are contradictory and, and uh, very challenging to uh, Einsteinian physics. So without any, taking any more of your time, Luis, come on up. Thank you. So, uh, this work started uh, four years ago. It was, in fact, uh, we did it for fun. Um, I am, let me try here. Yes, I am, this one here. Uh, these two are colleagues. Uh, I am in mechanical engineering, mechanical engineer, uh, as well as Marcel Audre, and Rodrigo is a chemistry from the chemistry department, and Mauricio is an undergraduate student. So our, our intention was to test mechani a mechanical, mechanical behavior of light. So, let me see, yes. This is our, uh, where it started four years ago. We were studying the, this movement, the libration of the moon, and we noticed that uh, the moon behaves uh, as well as a, a eccentric sphere. So our, our uh, tribe, uh, we would like to try to, to model a photon being as the moon, like the moon. So this is our photon in a very large scale. Okay, so, uh, and, but will it work? We didn't know. So the first try was, okay, so this is our photon. The basically is an eccentric sphere. Okay, the center of mass goes straight, while the centroid, the geometric center, goes towards the center of mass. Okay, and so in this framework, we have a particle and a wave behavior uh, joined simultane simultaneously. But will it work? We didn't know. So the first test was a uh, diffraction experiment. Uh, in this step, then color, then quantum decay, I will explain briefly. Uh, so in the first experiment, we, what we did? First, we went to the laboratory and set up the, the experiment, this is a laser. Uh, here is the slit and here the book head. And we collected this data, experimental data. Uh, this is uh, lights on and now lights off, the same same data, the same picture. And this magnified, we see the fringe as well as expected. Okay. And now what we did, we took our photon, our eccentric sphere, and we throw it against a slit, this brown, uh, brown area here is, uh, is the slit. So when the photon collides against the slit, it's change its trajectory, okay? And also its frequency was what, what was not expected at the beginning. But it changed its frequency. So uh, here it uh, arrives with one frequency and leaves with, with other frequency. Okay, so we throw a lot of spheres like this and the results, oh, all the collisions were elastic and Newtonian. Uh, this is the basic kinematics, what is simple. To simulate this eccentric sphere, we took uh, a sphere, a solid sphere, with an empty space. Okay, the kinematics is very simple. Uh, this is the equation, uh, this is center of mass, it goes straight, and the centroid, uh, you have this sin and cosine terms here. And a little bit difficult is dynamic. Dynamics, uh, we 
dot. The conservation of energy and momentum here, number three, is the conservation of energy, which is a rotational energy and translational energy uh, before the collision and after the collision. Okay, uh, it's 2K because yeah, it becomes simpler. And this is the momentum, linear momentum next in Y, and this rotational. The most complex terms in all of this was this one here, because depending on the collision point, I mean, where is the center of mass exact in the exact moment of the collision, this term changed. So for each collision, we had to recalculate this, this term of inertia. So, applied uh, against it, yes, dynamics. And, yes, after a large number of eccentric sphere has been thrown against a single slit, what is the expected pattern, pattern in the bulkhead? We had no idea, that was a surprise. Well, we got this result, what it was not expected, and we compared this result against the experimental results. And uh, I ever talked, uh, I learned that the light is a wave, the electromagnetic wave. But uh, we believe that we found a way in which a Newtonian sphere can achieve the same results. So this was our ticket to go on move on and okay so we pass somehow in this first test let's try another test okay ah this is uh, in the same test what we did we reduced the free we reduced the slit uh, to check how the fringes will would behave and uh, interesting as as soon as we reduce the slit the fringes behave as well in the experiments, the same way. So, uh, for me today, light is, uh, is ballistic. It's no longer a wave. But, okay, let's go on. Uh, how to simulate colors. I did my master in computer graphics, so I like very much this, this issue. Uh, to simulate colors, what we did, we took this work from 1931, what is known as the CIE uh, 1931 color model. This was published in the Transactions of Optical Society, and it's a, a big, fantastic idea. Very simple. They took three light sources, a red, a green, and blue, and here there are two different mixtures, chem chemical mis mixtures. And uh, two different ones. So here we have the mixture A and here, oh, better say, here the mixture A and here the mixture B. And behind we have photodetectors A and B. So if I put uh, the three light sources on 100% on of the its power, what will I see here? Okay, this photodetector captured, for example, uh, 0.6 volts and this one 0.2 volts. So a full color, uh, a full, all, all of them 100%, will plot, uh, in, in fact, all of them 100%, will plot this point here, where, which seems to be the white, uh, the, color, the color white. So at full, uh, and then the guild they started to reduce the power of each one of the scholars to balance and to do a map, a complete map of all possible colors. Uh, it, is it clear how it works? It's just, you, you, they, they turn on three lights in different colors, balance, and got these two values here from, from <coughs> a current, a volta voltage, I mean. And with these values, they plot, they simply plot these values in this graph. So uh, what you will have, this is in the Wikipedia, it's very well known color model. Uh, what we have is that in the border of this graph, we have all monochromatic lights uh, varying, varying 
from the blue, violet and blue, until uh, the green, until the red. And all colors here uh, inside are a simple combination of this uh, this uh, colors, this monochromatic colors of the board. So, what we, uh, what are metameric colors? We call metameric colors uh, colors that uh, the same perceptual color can obtain by different combinations of monochromatic light sources. So, for instance, we have a, a TV, television, or a LCD screen. We have uh, three light sources one blue, one green, and one red. And the screen, the television, simulates any of any one of these colors inside by combining a, a linear combination of these three sources. And if you have uh, another uh, three different sources, let's say here, or in here, and here, you can achieve the same color by combining other monochromatic ones. So, if I say that this is, uh, I mean, let's say a color, this is the mic. Yeah, the mic. The, the microphone. We uh, can't hear you. Huh? Microphone. No, no, you're talking to the microphone. We oh, can't hear you. Oh, yes. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So let's say if we say that something is green, like this exit uh, color there. Uh, it can have many different monochromatic colors inside. Many, the combination of different mono monochromatic colors can uh, achieve the same perceptual color that we are seeing there. Okay? So, uh, I can explain it later if someone has interest. Uh, so the idea was what? Uh, we saw in the first, in the first experiment, the diffraction, that uh, after collision, <coughs> the photon changes its frequency. So it has arrived with one color and leaves another one. Um, what is the idea? Model Newtonian, diffraction, ah, to model color, yes. What is the idea? After it, each collision, the frequency changes. The output frequency depends on the light source and the material, sure. So the light source is the incoming frequency, and the material, I'll, I'll say, uh, talk about this later, the material. So uh, we went to the computer, and using this model here, this model here, we throw uh, a frequent, this frequency of red, a monochromatic red, is a helium-neonium laser, and throwing thousands of of spheres against the uh, material, what we uh, achieved as output frequencies. The output frequencies, ha ha they had this pattern here, okay? Uh, we did the same to the green source. Note that the pattern looks like the prior, but the, the distribution change is not exactly the same. So each material responds different to any light source. So sorry. So it's the red, it's the green, and it's the blue. The blue is very thin. So when you combine both uh, the three, the three, we have this this uh, pattern. And what is this pattern? If I had full uh, red, full green, and full blue, it was expected to see white. So I had a white, uh, something, uh, some light that seems to me perceptually as being white. And what I see after collision is this color here. So instead of the, the incoming white, it became uh, this violet, let's say. Uh, in the same manner, I can generate any other color. So using this uh, eccentric sphere model. And so we said, okay, it's nice. It seems uh, it passed on uh, somehow in the diffraction test, in the color test. But we noticed something interesting. Here, oh, let, uh, sorry, I'll come back again. Here, we notice 
that when the photon is going to, to collision, it's going to, to face the material, it, it goes, okay, straight or horizontal here, let's say. But after collision, it leaves in many different angles. It can be one of these, these, many, many angles, possible angles. And what we notice that for an observer, for a photo detector that is here in this wall, let's say, the photon that came this way, describing this path, will take longer to achieve the photo detector. Longer than a photon that collides here and come back here. So the, some photos uh, returns very fast, and other, oh, other ones they turn, they take more time. Okay, so when I I ask my friend, my chemistry friend, about this, he said, "Oh, I have some now quantum decay. I am doing an experiment here in my laboratory. Come on, and what is the experiment? They has a, a, he had a neosine. What's a, what is a petroleum derivative? Then in Bacia de Campos in Brazil, in the coast of Rio de Janeiro. So this is a sample. He put this sample here." He took a laser, a pulsed laser, uh, and the idea is very simple. The laser pulls a wave front, let's say a wave front. The wave front collides, it, this box in, is entirely closed, there's no, no light inside. So the, this wave front collides against the, this neosine, uh, the light in, uh, by quantum mechanics it's absorbed by the neosine, and it takes some time to decay and emits new new photons. And okay, so that's the, the theory that I've learned at school. And this new this photons, this uh, this time spent to, to emit these new photons this, in this quantum decay is captured by these photo detectors. Okay, so uh, the equipment that do this uh, do this. Uh, do this test uh, uh, ha uh, achieved this result. So he emitted a wave front at time zero. After some times, uh, picoseconds, uh, it, the photons start returning to the photo detector. Uh, as expected, some some photons took a little bit more to gain, to gain, to gain, and so on until it returns to zero <coughs> and end. So the, the quantum decay took this time here, this time here, uh, in this case, neosine. Okay, what we did? We, we did, we take the same experiment here in colors, okay? We do not have the, the properties of neosine, so what we did? We, I just want to see the pattern of the return the time of the return. So well, I got, we got a pattern, and then I just uh, resize the image to see if the pattern of this returning fits the other one. And we achieved this result. So this is the experiment. This is the experimental result. And this is the pattern that we found using the ballistic uh, model of light, what is seems relatively close, and so this is the three tests we did until now. Uh, okay, so some comments. Ah, yeah, this comment is very interesting because the quantum decay depends on the photon's exit angle. The time to return to the photo detector depends on the tangent of this angle. This is the angle. And the, if the tangent is zero, it comes fast. If the tangent is large, it takes more time. Okay. The funny thing, oh, let me come back. The funny thing is that nowadays, this, uh, this model, uh, this situation is modeled uh, as an exponential uh, behavior in the literature. And each uh, substance, in this case, neosine, each one has a signature. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. I am mean, I mean Andy. Uh, each one has a signature. But 
uh, the signature does not fit perfectly the exponential. It's just an approach, okay. Uh, when we try the tangent, I don't have this graphic here, but basically, in an exponential case, what we have? We have something that grows fast like this, huh? And in the tangent, we have something like this, yeah? It comes here, okay. The, the comic thing is that in this part of the tangent, which includes 0 until 45 degrees, this graph behaves more approximately from the tangent than the exponential. So uh, we achieve better results using tangent to model this behavior here than exponential. Uh, he, he thought it was very, very interesting. Okay, so Andy, we did until now, uh, using this ballistic model, a diffraction test, which was fine, uh, a color test, my intention is to produce a ray tracing system from computer graphics on a ray tracing only based on this uh, mechanical model. And so we have a diffraction, colors, and quantum decay. For the future, future work, what are we tend to do? First, uh, based on the black, we have this belief that uh, based on this black body radiation and knowing melting process like water, we want, we would like to estimate a photon's melting point and other thermodynamical properties of the photon. What is the idea? Uh, you need a high temperature to radiation. So we believe that the photon is made of some substance, uh, we don't know which one, that uh, is in the lamp, okay? But when you heat it to a high temperature, <laughs> it melts and, and the photon is a drop. That's the, the model. The photon would be a drop. And this is the whole idea. So we have photons here and we're here and we uh, I, my intention is to put a camera and analyze not in this case because there are too many drops but uh, to analyze each drop from a, a big ice block melting uh, to see how can we link this situation to this situation and it's basically this fast 10 minutes <laughs> thank you We've got time for a couple questions. Somebody want to come up? Dr. Lucas? Great. Thank you. Please. Thank you. That was excellent. Thank you, Greg. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh. <laughs> sorry. When you put the hole in your uh, balls that you're doing and you rotate them, uh, you define a wavelength. I define, huh? A wavelength. A wavelength, yes. yes. Perfectly. And so, uh, what your the experiment is showing is that whenever there is a defined wavelength, you can see diffraction. Uh, in fact, in, in fact, um, Greg, is it possible just to, to oh, sure, come back sorry, here, just to show, sorry, a, a, show a picture? Sorry. Because the, the fringe pattern, it happens even if you have a non-eccentric, homogeneous sphere. The, pe the fringe they happen. I don't have this picture here. <laughs> so, so you're saying if the, if the balls were all billiard balls? Billiard like, balls, perfect, so it, yeah. All the same, you all the still same. get the same pattern? No, in fact, it's close. Uh, the ramp in, the, in the, what we saw, there's no, uh, the ramp is like this. It, oh yeah, just picture a little bit. Uh, the picture is uh, the, maybe the fifth, it's the at the beginning, the very beginning here. No, no, next, next, here, next. You can just let oh, you must be close. Yeah. Just show the slides. Well, here, you, you, can, you can go ahead. Oh, yeah. You can go ahead. Yeah, you thank you. Ahead. So, the picture, the behavior, okay, yes. If we have a billiard balls, it, uh, we would have these fringes, okay. But these fringes would be perfect uh, a ramp. Uh, a ramp, uh, I would say, like an exponential. 
they wouldn't have this this perturbation in fact the eccentric part is just to cause some kind of perturbation to 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 make these fringes look similar to what we are looking for so um, if we had billiard balls let me see in the exit example if we had billiard balls instead of, ha of having this red light here we would have a very bright light here and a decay uh, uh, attenuation to here right and so you wouldn't have any interference effects all you would have is uh, the distribution due to the yes mechanical, mechanical. and so uh, so what I'm saying is if you had no wave like property of the ball yeah. You won't get these diffraction patterns. You'll just get the overall envelope. Oh, okay. If I, I, I have no eccentric, I agree. If I have uh, completely a billiard ball, yeah, it's perhaps this pattern. But even if I, I do not start with an angular velocity, if it starts, it's eccentric, but it's going this way, not rotating. Even so, I, I achieve a pattern similar like this. Because in the first heat, the it changes to rotate. It, it starts rotating. Well, what, what I'm trying to say is, uh, if you remove the all wave-like properties of your sphere, yeah. you don't get the uh, uh, pattern that uh, we see here. You get uh, the regular pattern you would expect, um. which would be for no wave properties at all. Yeah. And uh, so any. What you're showing is that any body that has a property that is can be considered wave-like yeah. can cause these kinds of effects. Yes. Well, and so, for instance, in my case, I have a model of elementary particles, charged particles like electrons. Yes. And the wave property is this particle is in the shape of a ring, and and on the ring has a wavelength around it. Yeah. And so that wavelength causes it to undergo diffraction. Yes. And, and so uh, it isn't a point particle with some kind of a mysterious wave property attached to it. It's a physical wave property, just like you have a physical yeah, wave yeah, property right. in a ball. There are many models that are somehow similar. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just, I want to point that out. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, well, congratulations to those of you who made it to the end of the day. It's, uh, we're not done yet. Whoops. We're not done, done yet. And uh, did I, what's going on? I must, must be just now losing power, huh? <laughs> so this is good timing. I just want to do a couple quick announcements. We have uh, tonight from 7.30 to 10, we're going to be...